And the auto recycling business is a $22 billion a year industry. That money gained from reclaiming more than 75% of an automobile. But if some researchers at Argonne National Lab outside Chicago have their way, that percentage will get bigger. Clean Skies' Lee Patrick Sullivan was in Chicago for a behind-the-scenes look at how researchers are trying to keep these cars out of landfills. Lee. Well, Susan, the auto industry is often blamed for being a large contributor to rising CO2 emissions, but together with Argonne National Lab, recycling of automobiles could reduce CO2 emissions by more than 12 million tons a year, making the family car one of the greenest manufactured items. It's called a junkyard, but the material here is not junk. Three quarters of a trashed car or truck is stripped of its metal. The rest is what's called shredder residue. The non-metals is the shredder residue, which ends up now in landfills. With more than 12 million vehicles recycled each year in the U.S. alone, that makes for more than 5 million tons of that shredder residue ending up in landfills. Here's the Reader's Digest version of how a car is recycled. After all the usable parts are taken off and fluids drained, the car hulk is sent to a crusher and then put through a shredder. Then powerful magnets separate the metals from the rest of the shredded hulk. Other non-magnetic metals like copper and aluminum are then separated by weight. That takes care of about 75% of the residue. What to do with the remaining 25% has had auto recyclers stumped. And it's what the researchers at Argonne National Lab outside Chicago have been working on for the past five years. Uh, the, this material is very rich in polymers like plastics and elastomers, different rubber species. So our objective is to try to recover materials from the shredder residue, including the polymers, for recycling so that they could be reused instead of going to the landfill. Sounds simple, but here's the catch. There are several different kinds of polymers and elastomers that make up the various parts of a car, and most of them don't like each other and won't bond into a strong enough plastic. That's where Argon stepped in. So our second objective was to separate the polymer mixture into individual plastics or groups of compatible materials so that it could be used for making car parts or other parts for other industries. The folks at Argonne developed a way to separate the different polymers by using a special fluid. Now those plastics go into a process that takes several steps till they're eventually broken down into pellet size like this right here. Now these pellets are then turned into more car parts, like this air conditioning vent, for example. Being able to totally recycle nearly 90% of an automobile promises to be another revenue stream for the industry. As far as our, uh, our industry, anything that helps out the environment is definitely something that is a positive effect for the recycling community. Um, a lot of things that happen regulatorily will be passed up to us as far as addressing environmental concerns. and so. This is going to have a positive effect on our industry. And good news for consumers, the recycled plastic is stronger and cheaper than virgin plastic, lowering the cost of making a vehicle while upping its strength. Also, if recycled plastics are used in the auto industry, it would save more than 24 million barrels of oil a year in the U.S. alone. So it's good from an energy point of view. It's good for the environment. Plus, it makes these products more sustainable because we cannot just keep throwing things away in, in landfills and losing their energy value for too long. Sustainability is an important factor these days. Now, Susan, we're able to sneak this out of Argonne National Lab. It is uh, the residue, what's le left of a 1999 Chevy Tahoe. Wow. Actually, I don't know what kind and of car so this was. is with all of the harmful uh, parts removed. Yes. Um, and. <laughs> that can be made into several car parts, but s since you have a fully you know I have to smell it right. Yeah. <laughs> since you have a fully functioning car, we decided to get you something you can use in Washington D.C. <laughs> this was made from recycled plastic. Ah, it's a nice car scraper. I actually can use this. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you, Lee. So I'm sure there are a lot of older cars and uh, uh, you know um, uh, other trucks and things like that being recycled, and, and plastics have been known to hold some pretty nasty. Uh, uh, ingredients in them. Will, will those put that into, in, into this system as well? Well, um, years ago, uh, plastics had some very nasty chemicals in them. They had a, a large concentrate of PCBs, and when Argonne started doing this process, they found out that the, the plastic they were recycling also had high concentrate of uh, PCBs. So they have worked out a new system to wash it, and they ho hopefully will be able to bring this to a commercial scale real soon. Okay, so, so the plans are to ramp this up to 
from the system that we just saw here to commercial scale? Yeah, there's actually a plant in northern Missouri that's working with Argon. They've already ramped up. Uh, they're, they're keeping the location of this plant, this recycling plant, a, a top secret. But sometime this year, they say they've, they'll have all the bugs worked out and they'll have a grand opening. But you saw it first here on right. Clean Skies News. Yes, we did. All right. Thanks for the gifts, Lee. Great. Lee Patrick Sullivan.